President Trump today off Twitter and on message, finding a friendly crowd at an evangelical conference. Because as the Bible tells us, we know that the truth will prevail. No mention of James Comey, later ignoring reporters' questions here at the White Thank House. You. Mr. President, Thanks. do you think he told the truth? The president's rebuttal, a combative statement from his private Manhattan lawyer, Mark Kazowitz. The president feels completely vindicated and is eager to continue moving forward with his agenda and with this public cloud removed. Kazowitz accusing Comey of lying about Mr. Trump's demand for loyalty and claims he pressured Comey to back off Michael Flynn. The president never, in form or substance, directed or suggested that Mr. Comey stop investigating anyone. That dispute could easily be settled if the president released secret tapes that he's suggested exist, but is yet to produce. Kazowitz also seizing on other points, including the statement that Comey told Mr. Trump he was not personally under investigation. Mr. Comey has now finally confirmed publicly what he repeatedly told President Trump privately. The veteran trial lawyer attacking Comey for making public privileged communications with the president. Mr. Comey has now admitted that he is one of these leakers. The president's son, Don Jr., did tweet, Flynn stuff is BS, adding, very far from any kind of coercion or influence and certainly not obstruction. The strategy going forward, White House veterans insist, leave the Russia investigation to the lawyers. I would allow the White House to be focused on helping the president do the job of being president. And to me, that's most important. Don't get wrapped around the axle of the investigation. Tonight, a White House spokeswoman is pushing back after Comey blasted the White House for telling, quote, lies about his dismissal. Sarah Huckabee Sanders flatly declaring the president is not a liar. Lester, back to you. Peter Alexander at the White House, thank you. And for more on the political and the potential legal fallout from Comey's testimony, let me bring in Chuck Todd here with us in Washington and Savannah Guthrie back in New York. Chuck, let me start with you. We heard the Speaker of the House a moment ago say, essentially, the president's a newbie and may not know the ropes of protocol. Talk about the political fallout here, not only among Democrats, but within his own party. Look, I think publicly, Republicans like Paul Ryan and others who were never big Trump fans, there's that part of the party, but they continue to try to essentially publicly protect him. And that was a, a sense that he'd done that. Now, the problem is, I think Speaker Ryan looks silly, especially given... The, the, the worst aspect of that is the president told the attorney general to leave the room. So that, that, that tells you he knew that that was what he needed to do there. So I think it actually undercuts the, the larger issue that Paul Ryan was bringing up. But look, I think politically today, the president survived as far as his base is concerned outside of Washington. James Comey, though, did a lot of damage to the president's reputation here in Washington, and that is going to leave collateral damage with Republicans here in Washington for some time. All right, let me turn to Savannah. Savannah, you wear a lot of hats around her, also our chief legal correspondent. If we're talking about obstruction of justice, is there a potential criminal case here? Well, you know, it's very debatable whether the conduct we heard described today would rise to the level of obstruction of justice under our criminal laws. And the fact of the matter is our criminal statutes weren't really built for a situation like this where a president is potentially accused of firing his FBI director because he wants him to drop an investigation of a staffer. What would likely happen is that if the special counsel thought something was wrong here, that there was a criminal offense, that he would end up referring it back to Congress. There is Department of Justice guidelines that say you can't indict a sitting president. So yes, there are legal questions here, but they're going to end up in the political branches with Congress if we get there. All right, Savannah and Chuck, thanks to both of you. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.